Because if it's yes, then then he shaves himself. Yes, he lies. Shaves himself. But he, but then again, he cannot shave himself. So yes, but he is shaved by the barber. And thus cannot shave himself. But likewise, it's no. Why is it no? Because if he did not shave himself, by the rule, he has to the bar he has to shave himself. Because he's the barber. So you have a trouble in both cases. So this is my reason. So essentially the idea behind Russell's paradox and the barbershop paradox is self-referencing. It's a circularity. It's having a set that contains itself. It's, there's a problem. There's, there's a problem with Russell's well, paradox. Is you create liar sentences. Uh, if you are probably heard of a liar paradox, the village of everyone who just lies, who everyone lies, and then someone tells the truth. There's just it's a paradox. So now let's talk about, let's get a little bit more mathematical. How can we have what that said? Okay. So let's consider, so we're going to talk about Russell's paradox. So, Let's consider, let me give you an example of a property. Or let's make an example of a set here. Consider S equals the set of all sets. So X in, well, it's the set of all sets, not sets. It's not set, but you know, that's, that's for another day. Where X is in X. Okay. Well, this is an example of sets where set is in itself. We can have an example of set in itself. Consider set of all infinite sets. And by the way, it's still always a problem with these things, but he is an infinite set. Set of all infinite sets, infinite set. So the infinite set, well, the set of all infinite set is called I. I is in I. Oh, I forgot to say the next time it's called. Okay. So I means inside the set. In the epsilon means inside the set. Okay. So we have a set where the set is in itself. But now consider, now define R as equal to the set where x is not an x. Oh, but I prefer to put x where x is an x. Consider x where x is not an x. Okay. Was there any problem with this? Wait. So, yeah. Is there any problem with this? Well, same thing applying paradox. Is r in r? Well, if x, then r is not an r. So, that. If no, then r is not an r. But if r is not an r, but this says that this is a set of things that are not themselves. So R is in R, which is also bad. So here, this just demonstrates why you cannot have total freedom on any set theory rules. This is why we need axioms. Axioms well, that says what 
all the properties have to be derived from. What sets are allowed? What, how do we form new sets? So that's just a paradox. Okay. So now let's say, so how do we resolve the process paradox? So I originally thought it was something called axiom of wealth foundation. But it's actually an axiom comprehension. I looked it up recently because you have to say about what properties are you allowed. So, anyways, so I'm going to do. So I'm not. I, I I'm not a loser. I I have not memorized all the first order logic forms of every um, Zermelo Frankel axioms. But I'm just going to give you a few Zermelo Frankel axioms that I read on this book that I would like you guys to know. And the rest you can read on your own, which are very good. I like them. I don't need to bring up world foundations to you guys right now. So. Okay, things I would like to know is, okay, now let's start from nothing and let's maximize sets. Well, if we maximize sets, we should at least have one set, maybe one set to build up all other sets from. So, the first axiom is an axiom, by the way, it's not the first part of the logical, this is just a colloquial English one, it's an axiom of existence, right? It essentially says that we have, a, there we have a set. We have one set so far, and it's called the empty set. So you say, whoa, why is the empty set important? Dude, empty set is just like zero. You can build stuff from zero. You can build stuff from the empty set. So example is, this is the empty set, right? This is a set containing the empty set. First of all, let's call the empty set zero. Let's call the set containing empty set one. Let's call the set containing zero and one two. Let's consider n equals n minus one, n minus two, up to zero. So this is called the von Neumann ordinals. I have just constructed from you the natural numbers using sets and using just empty set and is repeatedly taking building sets from the empty set. So, next one is axiom of existence. The axiom of union says that we can take two sets and just take the union of it. And you guys know set union, and we're aware of that. It's essentially saying if we have so axiom of union, if we have two sets, let's say this universe of sets and this universe of sets, then I can just say, okay. I can, then there exists another set that contains all the elements of the above two universes. Axiom of union. There's also an axiom of. Is there an axiom of. Axiom of pair, axiom of comprehension. Oh, this is a boring one that I want you guys to know. Oh, where's the non so boring one? Well, that is a boring uh, Axiom of power set. But I have to teach you guys something before power set. Okay, axiom of set I think everyone here can get on their own. The axiom comprehension means it's just a sifting rule that we're talking about, building new sets or known sets, and just sifting out with specific properties, specific predicates being satisfied. Um, two divides x on a set of integers. Um, just a sifting property. Uh, you can read about that. Not as important, but this one's really important. In fact, if you can learn just one axiom today, and this is the one you need for the theory, this is the reason why we're taking. This is the reason why we're taking a break, is because we need to know axiom of extensionality. Oh. Okay. So you guys know how we can say x in a set, right? So for example, this says 1 is in the set 0, 1, 2. But we also have can say subsets. One, two, three. Or let's say subset. The subsets can be equal. And this this is non proper subset. So one, two, three, four, five. This says subset relation means every element it's a relation between two sets. This says that every element in the first set is an element of the second set. It's called subset. So, what axiom extensionality says, 